Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some caretaking romance recommendations for you. I believe this is my fourth video of caretaking romances so you can go check out the other three. They're going to be linked down below if you would like even more recommendations. If you don't know what caretaking means, the trope of caretaking, someone in the couple in the romance book either gets sick, injured, isn't feeling well, and the other person takes care of them. I love it. I love caretaking for other people. So I really appreciate it when other people caretake for, are caretaking towards me. So I just love these types of romances. First, I have Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean. This is one of my favorite books that I read last year. This one has endometriosis representation and I just adore it. I think it is beautiful. This is the fake dating romance between Evie and Liam. They didn't really like each other growing up as kids and Evie has now moved to France and Liam and Evie's friend end up coming across her one day in France and by some circumstance, the two of them have to fake date. There's a lot more to this book than just that, but that's like the bare rough bones that I'll leave you with because this book is just fantastic and I want to leave you wanting more, obviously. This book is full of baking, cuteness, like a quirky, fun heroine and a man that will do anything for his woman. One of the reasons why I love Liam Kelly so much in here is because of how he takes care of Evie. And that's coming to like my soft spot in my heart. I love, love someone taking care of me or me taking care of someone. I think that is kind of maybe my love language. Evie would have flares of her endo and Liam was there to help take care of her in any way he could. And I just adore him. He was so sweet and caring and patient with her. And the way that he took care of her in instances where she couldn't even get out of bed, like I felt that so hard. That's what I want because of what I've dealt with with my chronic illness. And so I guess that just really appeals to me <laughs> in a romantic sense and even just a person preference. Like I feel like that shows a lot to someone if you're able to take care of them when they're sick or injured. So. I love this one and more people need to read it. Next, I have Painted Scars by Neva Altaj, the first book in the Perfectly Imperfect series. This is the romance between Roman and Nina. Roman is blackmailing this guy who owes him a lot of money. He's a brothel boss, by the way. And he finds out that that man who's in the outs with him has a daughter and he's gonna actually blackmail her to marry him because he needs a wife. He got in an accident and now he is not able to walk on his own anymore. But anyway, he ends up blackmailing Nina to be his wife because he doesn't want to look weak to other Bratva bosses um, because of his disability. That's the way of the world in his world. Like men can look at him as weak if he's in a wheelchair. And so he's like, how can I make my position stronger? Because I am right for this position. It doesn't matter if I'm in a wheelchair or not. And so he decides like he needs a wife to strengthen his seat as a Bratva boss. So he marries Nina. She ends up helping him sometimes when he is in pain and experiencing chronic pain due to his injury. But then also one of the big scenes in here with caretaking is when Nina gets really, really sick and he takes care of her. He stops everything and anything and cancels all of his meetings, all of his Bratva important things to take care of his very sick wife. Mm -mm. It was so good. Next, I have Everything For You by Chloe Leese. This is one of my favorite books ever. And this is probably my favorite book with caretaking in it possibly because there's one scene in here that just floored me. This is the romance between Gavin and Oliver. Gavin in here is quite older than Oliver. He has been a soccer superstar for a while. Um, Oliver, when he was a kid, he even had like posters of him and his professional career on his wall. And he was like, I want to grow up to be like him one day. And now they're on the same soccer team. Gavin is experiencing a lot of chronic pain because he's been going through the sport for quite a long time. And he's actually very jealous of Oliver. Oliver is this bright, young, fit young man who is just starting in his soccer career and he's very envious of that. It's also very grumpy sunshine. Gavin in here is the grump, Oliver's sunshine, and his goal is to make Gavin smile. Like he just wants to see a smile on his face. There are multiple instances of caretaking in here. I believe Oliver has a panic attack on an airplane and Gavin is there to basically like stoically hold his hand and be there for him during his panic attack. Um, but there's another scene as well that I really related to. Gavin in here is experiencing a lot of chronic pain and they're also next door neighbors, by the way. So. 
Oliver hasn't heard from Gavin. He goes into his house and he finds that Gavin is in a lot of pain and he can't even get up and take a shower by himself. So Oliver uses a shower chair to help take care of him in the shower. And I just started sobbing <laughs> because I use a shower chair and I just really relate it to Gavin in certain instances, but I also just fell in love with Oliver because of that effort of caretaking, like that deep love you feel for someone that you would take care of them while they're sitting on a shower chair because they can't move. Like, I love him so much. Like, get me a man like Oliver, please. I want him. Next, I have Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. This is another mafia romance. Alessio in here is in need for a nanny for his six-year-old son. Enter our heroine named uh, Natalia. Natalia is a speechless character. She was injured to a point where she is not able to speak anymore. And so she becomes the nanny to his son and she learns all about his son and just wants the best for him and will do like anything to make that happen because she's just starting to fall in love with this little boy. There's definitely more going on in this book, but that's just like the rough part of it because there are many twists and turns and secrets in here. I don't want to spoil anything. But at the beginning of this book, Natalia's kind of scared of Alessio. He's this big mafia dude. And um, she's this like kind of shy, quiet woman. And there's one instance where she's trying to just like, she's curious about um, where he's living because I think it's like Beauty and the Beast-esque, like the scene where they're like, don't go to the third corridor or something because that's where he lives, like the beast lives and you can't go in there, that's off limits. And so that's basically what he's deemed his room is the off limits room, you can't go in his room. And so one day when he's out, she's kind of curious of like what's going on in his room. And so she goes in there and he shows up in the room while she's in there and he is covered in blood. Like he is injured, covered in blood and she is going to clean him up. I'm gonna leave it there because I don't wanna spoil anything. But that is the big caretaking scene when she is taking care of him after he got injured and he's all bloodied up. So she's gonna take care of his wounds and stuff like that. Next, I have a book that is just basically all caretaking. This is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. This is the romance between Vlad and Elena. They actually grew up and were childhood best friends in Russia. Vlad ends up becoming a ice hockey player in America and Elena really wants to go to school in America. So they actually get married so she can come to America and go to school there. The beginning of this book is about Vlad realizing that he wants more than just a marriage of convenience with Elena. He actually wants a real marriage, but before he can like say anything really to her and get this in the works, Vlad gets injured during a game and Elena is there and comes swooping in to basically take care of him while he's injured. He's bedridden basically. I feel like this was such an interesting and compelling uh, marriage of convenience romance. These two are already married, but it's about the two of them falling in love. I really enjoyed this one. If you want a good sports romance with caretaking, I really recommend this one. Next, I have a whole series. This is the Captured by Alien series by A.G. Wild. These are alien romances that are chocked full of caretaking scenes. This book starts out with Zool, the first book in the series where um, these five human women are captured by evil aliens and they get roped into this undercover takedown thing that these good aliens are doing to the bad aliens. So these bad aliens are kind of like frog creature aliens. Just by the way, they are horrible. Like trigger warning in these books for SA, specifically um, book one and book two, I feel like there's like on page SA, not towards the main character, but it's like there, it is horrible um because these aliens are awful so these evil aliens are no good and so Zool and his like crew of aliens there's five of them are on this undercover mission to basically take these aliens down so they go undercover in this space station with these evil aliens and they're gonna try and take them down these women end up getting in the crossfire of that and each of the men end up saving a human woman and they crash land on this desert planet close to the space station and they have to survive individually as groups alone together. So that's what each book in the series is about. So Zool is about Zool and this one human trying to survive on this planet and next and so forth, you get the drift. These heroines are not used to this alien way of life. So these aliens are taking care of them for the majority of these books. Um, and some of them get injured, attacked, sick. Heroin in book four has her period and the hero has to take care of her in that instance. So there's a lot of caretaking in these alien romance books. Next, I have an offer from a gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is book number three in the Bridgerton series. This is Benedict's story in the Bridgerton 
family. <laughs> um, and this is a Cinderella retelling with him and Sophie. I love Sophie so much. That's why I'm going to be really mad if they change Benedict's story up and Sophie doesn't exist. Like I'm going to be so angry because Sophie is like one of my favorite heroines in this entire series. So anyway, this is a Cinderella retelling. So Benedict and Sophie end up meeting one day at a ball with like masks on and the two of them can't stop thinking about each other after the fact. But Sophie is the stepdaughter to this wicked woman and is treated horribly and you kind of like get the drift with a Cinderella retelling, you know? There is trigger warning in here for family abuse and neglect, so please be aware of that. But the caretaking scene in here is the heroine takes care of Benedict when he is sick. And that's all I'm gonna leave you with, but I thought this was a great social class difference. Romance, I'm not the biggest fan of Benedict, okay? But read this book solely for Sophie because she's amazing. Next, I have Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks, one of my favorite historicals ever. This is a rivaling families romance, so... These are two characters from rivaling Highland families. Evelyn is from the Armstrong family and Graham is the Laird to the Montgomery uh, family. And the king of all the land is like, I'm sick of these families feuding. You and you, you're gonna get married. Evelyn's family is not very happy about this. Evelyn was actually thrown from a horse a few years ago and she has not been the same since. They don't know though that she's actually just deaf and can't hear them. She's been getting by all these years by lip reading and not speaking at all. She's terrified that her family is going to make her marry this horrible man that was awful to her before her injury. So she's just gonna zip her lips and stay quiet because she is terrified of him. At first, she's very nervous to marry Graham, but once she meets him, she is enthralled because his voice is this low baritone sound that she is actually able to hear a little bit. She is all for going to his his place and marry him and all that jazz because she can hear. She can hear a little bit of what someone's saying. It takes a little bit, but Graham finally realizes what is going on with Evelyn and that she is deaf and he decides that he is going to do everything he possibly can for this woman. Like he is falling in love with her. She's falling in love with him. I adore this one. Um, there are multiple instances of caretaking in here. Um, I'm not gonna specify one. Evelyn does get injured a few times in this book. So be aware of that. And I think like the big one was something to do with Graham and Evelyn taking care of Graham. I think he's either sick or injured. I can't recollect. I read this book for the first time like years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I really love this one. If you want a good historical with caretaking, I really recommend this one. Next I have The Taming of a Highlander by Lisa Braden. This is the second book in her what series is it midnight in scotland series i love this series it's so underrated y'all need to read more lisa brayden okay she is a very good historical romance author this is the romance between kate and broderick broderick was wrongfully committed of a crime and so i think he was in jail for a little bit he ended up losing his eye and he has like ptsd from being in jail the beginning of this book broderick is out for revenge on the man who put him in this situation and he's basically caught him and beat him kate is taking a walk through the woods at this time and ends up witnessing broderick beating up this man and she is terrified she ends up running away so she ended up witnessing this crime and doesn't want to be used against broderick to put him in jail again and so she has to marry him. Roderick at first isn't very happy that he has a wife he never planned on marrying. But once he gets to know Kate he he cannot help but fall in love with her. I loved Broderick's like redemption in the story. He goes through a lot in book one. And so I love how Kate shows him that he is totally 100% worthy of love. It was beautiful. The caretaking scene in this book, the main one is that Kate gets hurt and Broderick goes like feral. <laughs> so I love when that happens and where a man just becomes like completely feral over his woman when she's sick or injured. I, I eat it up. And the last book that I'm going to talk about today is Married by Morning by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number four in the Hathaway series. This is the romance between Leo and Catherine. Leo is the eldest and I think only brother amongst the Hathaway siblings. Um, and Catherine is actually the governess to two of his youngest sisters. Throughout the other books in the series, you get to read about their bantering relationship. Leo in book one is going through a lot. The woman he was in love with, his fiance ended up dying from a sickness that he was also sick with, but he survived. So he's having like survivor guilt. So he's going through a lot in book one, but you see him grow in the other books in the series. That's why I really recommend reading these books in order. However, like you can technically read this one as a standalone. I feel like you'd get more out of it though, if you did read them in order, where you get to read about Catherine and Leo is like a bickering relationship throughout the other books in the series. So yes, Catherine is the governess to Leo's sisters and she deals a lot. She has to deal with a lot when she's taking care of these girls. Like one of them has a lot of pets. She's getting to a lot of trouble. Like 
these girls are a lot, but Catherine loves her job. She loves this family. And then she ends up reluctantly falling in love with Leo and Leo ends up falling in love with her, obviously. Catherine ends up taking care of Leo at one point in this book. And I don't want to spoil it to tell you what happened, but there is a major caretaking scene in here that I was just swooning over. I loved it so much. I feel like a lot of caretaking scenes, you have like one character who's injured or loopy from medicine or something like that, or they're so sick, they don't know what they're saying. And a lot gets like, blurted out of them to how they feel about the other person when they're sick or they're being taken care of and i just swoon over those scenes so there's one of those moments in this book that i just loved anyways so you have it those were some caretaking romance recommendations for you please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a yellow flower emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see you all soon in my next one bye y'all